final leg back here to talk about the world indoor championships of course the women's 400 meters was one of my most anticipated events at these world indoor championships and shauna miller weibo from the bahamas probably as expected, came away with that gold medal in the 400 meters, really dominating the competition, putting to rest any questions or confusions or anything that we had about her going into the competition. Um, but despite her not running all year, right, the final race really did play out just as most of us probably expected it, right? Miller Weibo went out fast, Bull was right behind her, but didn't have the speed necessary to be able to keep up with her. And really Miller Weibo just got to the break first, ran away and no one was going to be able to catch her. But let's break down what exactly happened throughout this entire competition from the heats all the way to the final that got Miller Weibo that gold medal. Now. In the heats, obviously not too much fanfare. Femke Bull was comfortably out in her heat too, won the heat 51.48 seconds. She had the fastest winning time of all the heats. But Miller Weibo in heat five, this was her indoor debut for 2020. And not only did she not run all throughout the indoor 2022 season, but her last race was the Tokyo Olympic final last year in July. So there were tons of questions of how she was gonna be. Remember, she pulled out of the Birmingham indoor meet because of you know setbacks in training or just things she wasn't ready for. So this is gonna be her first meet on the track and she looked super, super comfortable, literally as if she was on a training run. She got to lead, hit the break first, 200 meters in 23.94 seconds, extremely fast as she usually does. And in the last 50, she was basically jogging it in, looking around to make sure that she won her heat, make sure that she was comfortable. And she got her heat win, 51.74 seconds, ahead of Steffi Ann McPherson from Jamaica. So Miller Weibo, second fastest time in the heats, going on to the semifinals. Now, this is where things got pretty interesting in these semifinals. Because they had the top two times, Bull and Miller Weibo were in separate semifinals. So we weren't gonna see them clash here, perfectly fine, right? But what was really important about these semifinals is that there were only two heats and the top three women from each of these semifinal heats qualified to the final. So there were no time qualifiers. You had to be top three. With that, based on where you finished in your semifinal, determined the lane that you would get in the final. So the semifinal winners would get lanes five or six in the final, second places would get lanes three or four, and then of course third placers would get lanes one or two in the final. So it's pretty much advantageous to get the win in your heat to be able to get one of those outside lanes and have a little bit of advantage, of course, considering indoors with the turns and the hills and the banks and all that stuff. So really that's what we wanted to be able to do. But the women had to be able to conserve as much energy as possible. This was three rounds of the 400 meters over the course of two days. So not easy at all, even for the best women in the world. Well, semifinal one had Femke Bowl versus Stephanie Ann McPherson. This is very important. Despite Bull being significantly faster, of course, we know that she has her PB this year of 50.30 seconds. She runs the 400 meters basically opposite of what McPherson does. Bull tends to go out much more slowly, very conservatively to that first 200, and then really turn it on in that second half of the race. Remember, using her 400 meter hurdle strength to be able to get those wins. McPherson, on the other hand, tends to go out much quicker and really that's what's necessary to win an indoor 400 meters again you have that break you want to lead the race you want to control the pace those dynamics really played out in this semifinal race and basically affected the entire outcome of this race bull was in lane five so she couldn't see mcpherson who is behind her in lane four bull out very steady very conservatively as she usually does and by the time they started to come around that second curve about to hit that break McPherson was pulling up on her and really pushed the pace of the race. Bull was trying to pick things up potentially to get the break, but at that point, it was really just too late and she had to run wide while McPherson managed to get the lead at the 200 meter mark. 
Now, going down that back straight, around the curve, down the back straight, Bull again tapped into her normal strategy of really turning it up and trying to pass other athletes, but this wasn't the same situation and the same competitors that she had usually been racing against. McPherson is very experienced. She has a world championship medals. She got fourth place at the Olympics last year. She knows how to run with the best and has the ability to push and turn it on when she needs to. So when they got to the final curve, Bull was unable to actually pass McPherson, right? So at that point, she left her to be able to have to run on lane two that entire time McPherson held the lead. And by the time they got to that home straight, Bull made her final push, but she really couldn't have it. She was running in lane two that entire race, trying to push it, couldn't get the lead. And remember what I said about the Heat winners getting the preferred lanes of five and six in the final? What I think happened was that Bull realized that she needed to get that win. She tried to lean as much as she could, eventually falling and really kind of crashing to the track, banging her head pretty hard, pretty significantly across the line. It unfortunately wasn't enough. McPherson got the win in semifinal number one, getting it over Bull. Bull came in second place, relegating her to either lane three or four in the final. And despite her loss though, this would be a great, great race and really a huge learning experience for her in that final. Now, semifinal number two was basically the polar opposite of the first semifinal. Miller Weibo was going up against some really tight competitors, Leaky Klaver from the Netherlands, Rita Irsatek from Poland. Both of these ladies are known for going out very fast, but Miller Weibo really made this look like another training run. She was out quickly, just as she normally is. She got to the break with ease. At the break, she literally started to just look around, making sure that she was comfortable and clear from the rest of the field. She hit the 200 meter mark in 23.79 seconds. Very comfortable, with ease, really an easy margin over Claver, who was just about 24 seconds to the 200. But for the rest of the race, Miller Weibo was basically jogging. I mean, I wanna say she was jogging. She was obviously running, but it was so comfortable. In the last 50 meters, she was really, she wasn't even looking forward. She was just looking to the side, making sure she was away from the rest of the field, comfortable just getting that win. This looked like an easy run for her. And she got that win, 51.39 seconds, very easy. And this proved that she was the clear favorite to win this gold medal. She really proved that she was the one to win this gold medal. Guess what? We got to the final, and I think things really paved out as we expected. Miller Weibo, she was in lane six, while McPherson, remember, she won semifinal number one, she was out in lane five. Bull had lane four, and then Sweetie Irsatek, she had lane three. Now, despite already being the favorite, this race was set up for Miller Weibo to win without a doubt. She was already known for going out fast, right? We know she hits 23 seconds out fast for the first 200 meters, but she's also able to hold on after a very fast pace, right? She's able to run a very strong second 200. But probably more importantly, she also was out in lane six. So imagine a situation where maybe the competition is really pushing the pace and someone just chooses to go out super fast and maybe there's a lot of traffic. She could just move out a little bit, right? She's not gonna have anyone to her outside. She doesn't have to worry about the bumping, the pushing and the jostling or anything like that. So again, this was set up for Miller Weibo to win this race. But all of that didn't even matter. Miller Weibo out fast from the gun, got the break, hit the 200 meters in 23.42 seconds. That is extremely fast. And to put that in context, the other top women, Femke Bull, McPherson, Sweetie Irsatek, Bull's 200 meter personal best indoors, which she ran this year, is 23.37 seconds. Sweetie Irsatek, her personal best is 23.64 seconds. And then McPherson, she's never run an indoor 200, but her outdoor personal best is 22.90 seconds. So the fact that Shawnee Miller Weibo ran 23.42 seconds for her first 200, the other ladies would have had to either run a personal best or close to a personal best in the 200 just to get the lead. Miller Weibo was running, was winning this race without a doubt. This race was over once Miller Weibo got the lead. What was really amazing to see though was that Femke Bowl, she finally went out fast for that first 200 meters. She came in just behind Miller Weibo, hitting the 200 at about 23.7. So pretty fast for her standards, considering she usually goes out in about 24 plus seconds. But as expected, Miller Weibo ran away from the field 
winning in a time of 50.31 seconds. So not a PB and not even a world lead, but remember, this was three 400 meter races over the course of just two days. So this was not easy. And that's why I remember, I predicted to not see a sub 50 second run, right? Sub 50 seconds is no joke indoors. These women showed why running fast and running sub 50 is very, very hard, but they all proved that this was a great dominating performance. Miller Weibo got the gold medal, Femke Bull got the silver medal, and Stephanie Ann McPherson in a great personal best held on for that bronze medal. Great performances by all three of these ladies, right? Miller Weibo really continuing to add to her legacy that she's been putting down and building upon since about 2013, right? When she was coming out of the University of Georgia, just her freshman year there. She won an indoor gold here. That also adds to her indoor bronze from 2014 at World Indoors, right? In addition to all her outdoor accolades, her world championship medals, her double Olympic gold medals, Miller Weibo is really cementing herself as one of the greatest 400 meter runners in history. Femke Bull, she is definitely gonna be improving in her outdoor 400 meter hurdles, right? This speed, that work that she's been doing indoors in the 200 and in the 400 is definitely gonna um, really improve her 400 meter hurdles outdoors. Don't know if she's really gonna be challenging Sydney McLaughlin or Dalila Muhammad, that's for another conversation, but this does bode well for her, right? Overall, amazing race. Once we saw Miller Weibo step on that track and really just put down in the heats in the semifinals, this was her race to lose, and of course she, chose, she showed that she was not losing this race. Great race, and I think this is gonna bode well very nicely for her outdoors, and proves why she is the clear favorite for the World Championship gold medal in Eugene this year. So go in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this race. Let me know if you think how this indoor season is gonna affect these ladies as they move outdoors, right? Is this gonna help them? Is this gonna hurt them? Is it gonna you know, increase their chances of potentially winning some medals outdoors? But let me know what you all think. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and be back again next time. Thanks.